Welcome back, everyone. Ready to dive into another mystery. Always up for it, especially when it involves a ticking clock and a race against time. You got it. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the nuclear clock. And from the first few chapters alone, let me tell you, it's a wild ride. Yeah, the author doesn't waste any time grabbing your attention. No kidding. We meet Alex. Seems like a regular teen, right? Mm, nah. Until, bam, mysterious package arrives. And suddenly, he's got a whole lot more to worry about than homework. <laughs> that clock, though, talk about creepy. Right, no hands. Just this constant ticking. Makes you wonder what it's counting down to. What do you think? Listener's name. Ever received a package that gave you the chills? It's such a classic hook, but it works. In the way the author describes the clock, the green glow, the silent, except for that tick, tick, ticking, it gets under your skin. Totally. And just when you think, okay, maybe it's just a prank, boom, midnight visitor. Okay, that's when I started getting seriously creeped out. Mm. Nightmare or real threat, the author knows how to keep you guessing. For sure. But then, the next morning, Alex sees that newspaper headline, you know, the one about those escalating global tensions. Suddenly, it's not so easy to dismiss as just a bad dream. Ugh, yeah, talk about hitting a little too close to home, right? That's what I love about this author, though. They ground the story in these unsettling realities that make the danger feel terrifyingly plausible. Totally. And just when you think Alex might catch a break, air raid sirens at school. Not a drill. The pacing is brilliant. Each chapter leaves you hanging on the edge of your seat, dying to know what happens next. Absolutely. But it's not just the external action. Right. What's happening inside Alex's head is just as intense. I mean, this is a kid suddenly forced to deal with a burden no teenager should have to face. No kidding. The author really gets into the psychological impact of this whole situation on Alex. You can't help but wonder how you would react if you were in his shoes. Right. It's a reminder that even in these crazy, larger-than-life situations, it's the human element that truly resonates. And speaking of relatable characters, let's talk about Zoe. What do you make of her? Listener's name. Can Alex trust her? Ooh, Zoe. She's an interesting one, definitely drawn into the mystery, but there's something about her reaction to the clock. Like, maybe she knows more than she's letting on. Hmm, yeah. It's like she's holding back, you know, Allie. Or maybe something else entirely. The author definitely keeps us guessing about her true intentions. For sure. Adds another layer of suspense to the whole thing. No doubt. And as if we didn't have enough to puzzle over, we've got Dr. Stryker, this whole underground facility, and then there's the old man. Is he the villain? of our story or is there something else going on i have so many questions right and then there's that whole thing with the quantum nullifier the hints of time travel it's like the author took the classic ticking time bomb scenario and cranked it up to 11. i know right time travel <laughs> things are getting complicated what do you think about that whole element listener's name does it add to the story or just make it more confusing i think it's a brilliant move by the author it's not just about time travel as this cool sci-fi trope, you know. It's about how time travel forces you to think about choices and consequences in a whole new way. I see what you mean. And in these next few chapters, the author really takes us deep into this world, this secret facility, shadowy figures. It's giving me classic conspiracy thriller vibes, but with a sci-fi twist. Right. And the setting, the way it shifts from Alex's town to that underground facility, it's like we're experiencing that claustrophobia right alongside him. The walls are closing in, both literally and figuratively. And then we finally meet Dr. Stryker. Mm -hmm. And she drops some serious truth bombs about the clock, about what's really at stake. It's a total game changer, right? Yeah. Suddenly we're not just worried about stopping some abstract threat. We're facing a situation where maybe, just maybe, letting the clock run its course is the real danger. Whoa. Talk about a moral dilemma. And to make matters even more complicated, we finally come face to face with the old man, Kronos, and he's brought a special guest. Older Alex. <laughs> that twist. Yeah. I did not see that coming. Talk about throwing another log on the fire of my what is happening brain. Me too. It's like the author took everything we thought we knew about the story and flipped it on its head. But now it's not just about the future, right? It's about how messing with the past can change everything. Seeing an older version of yourself, I can't even imagine. Hmm. What do you think, listener's name? Is older Alex someone we should trust? It's tough to say. He seems to care about Alex, wants to protect him, but there's something. Maybe his experience has changed him. Or maybe he's hiding something. It's like he's both familiar and a total stranger. Yeah. You're stuck in this web of trust and suspicion. You want to believe him, but just when you think Alex might be getting some answers, bam. Another <laughs> cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. How did that ending make you feel? 
This one hit different, didn't it? It's not just about the action or the suspense. It's the idea of time loops. It makes you question everything that came before. It makes you wonder how many times Alex has gone through this. Can he break free? I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Talk about a mind-bending twist. Right. The author really throws us for a loop, literally. And that's where these final chapters take us, deep into the world of temporal loops. It's one thing to talk about time travel in theory, but to actually see it play out like this, to feel that sense of repetition and deja vu. It's like being stuck in a nightmare you can't wake up from, which is exactly what Alex is going through. And what's interesting is how the author doesn't shy away from the psychological toll this takes on him. I mean, imagine being told you're the only one who can prevent a global catastrophe. I can't even imagine the pressure. But even with everything on his shoulders, there's this resilience in Alex, this refusal to give up. It's like even when he's facing the same impossible situation over and over, he keeps searching for a different outcome, a way to break the cycle. Exactly. And that's what makes his final choice so powerful. I won't spoil it for our listeners, but let's just say it's a decision that speaks volumes about free will, about the ripple effects of our actions, even the seemingly small ones. It's a powerful message. Even when it seems like everything is predetermined, we always have a choice. Absolutely. So looking back at our deep dive into the nuclear clock, I think it's safe to say this is more than just a thrilling sci-fi story. It's a story that makes you think about your own relationship with time, with the consequences of your actions. It's a story that stays with you. Yeah. It certainly does. And it reminds us that even in the most extraordinary of circumstances, it's the human element, the choices we make that truly matter. Well said. Until next time, deep divers, keep exploring. You never know what mysteries await.